Hey. You want a Hershey bar? <laughs> it's not funny. <laughs> you want a Hershey bar, huh? God bless America. The little G God, of course. God bless America. Let's make America great again. <laughs> you want a Hershey bar, huh? Uh, other kin madness. Other kin madness. You know, yesterday, praise the Lord, was a really good day. Um, got to uh, spend time with the, uh, some of the brethren, got a lot of stuff done. But then yesterday, you know, got work done too, and also got, um, you know, stuff ready for what we're about to engage in. But, um, you know, last night I came upon that thing about the, uh, the Hershey bar with the, the man who wants to be a woman um, holding the Hershey bar and stuff like that. <laughs> it's just, wow. And, you know, how, what's next? What what is next, people? Okay, if you for one moment think that we as mankind are evolving into this more moral whatever, or that man is evolving into something better by saying that evil is good and good is evil by acceptance of sin, let me just tell you plainly: you're stupid. You are absolutely stupid. Okay, and stupidity is willful ignorance. Okay, that's what stupidity is. Is you are being willfully ignorant. You don't want to know the truth. Okay, but can it? Do you need any more evidence, people, that mankind, as it sits today, has gone past the point of no return? Not all of mankind. Okay, not all of mankind. There are uh, those out there who see what the world is, what mankind is right now, the world is today, and are disgusted by it and hate it and want nothing to do with it. Plus, the Church of the Living God, the body of Christ, is still on the earth as we speak. Okay, so we as the Church of the Living God are out there living according to the scriptures to be ambassadors uh, for Christ and to preach the gospel on to the law. So there's still that inkling of hope for individuals. But you know, what more evidence do you need that mankind is depraved, is wicked? Okay, this whole week, this whole week, the Lord has just been showing me thing after thing and like I need to be reminded, but apparently so. And you know, with that that sow, that pig, who calls herself a woman, um, seeing that, and also about this nonsense about the revivals and this Asbury or whatever, Asbury, uh, not Ashbury, Asbury, excuse me. Thank you for the correction, brother. And now, you know, I was made aware of this other kin thing. I mean, what, what, what's next? What's next? What's next? Okay? What's next? Do you not see, dear friend, whoever you are, that the world is going to Hades, hell, in a handbasket? And you think mankind is getting better, more enlightened, because, hey, sin is in. It's okay to it's okay to live in sin. It's okay to mutilate your body. It's okay to have contempt with what God made. What's next? But see, brethren of the Church of the Living God, we have to remember something. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. Please follow me along, word for word, verse by verse of the scriptures that you and I will be looking at today. Follow me along. Make sure I'm telling you the truth. Make sure I'm not lying to you. If there comes a part where we read something and you're not, if you're like not really clear about context, 
pause the video and read the context on your own time. Be a Berean. Search the scriptures daily whether these things be so, okay? Follow me along because sometimes I skip a groove. You know, the mouth goes quicker than the brain. Hey, the last video that was done made several mistakes in that video, speaking mistakes. Okay, thankfully the Lord, you know, <laughs> knock on wood, um, corrected me and got us through it. But, uh, you know, follow me along, okay? Don't just sit there right follow me along be a Berean okay Luke chapter 22 just two verses verse 52 and 53 then Jesus said unto the chief priests and the captains of the temple and the elders which were come to him be ye come out as against the thief with swords and staves when I was daily with you in the temple ye stretch forth no hands against me Think about this, dear brethren, Church of the Living God, that Satan, he, in 2 Thessalonians it says, He who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Now that's talking about us, the Church of the Living God, the body of Christ. We, the Church of the Living God, the body of Christ, get taken out of here first, and then that man of sin, and then that wicked shall be revealed, that man of sin, the son of perdition, okay? As long as the body of Christ is on the earth, okay, we, the body of Christ, because of Christ, are hindering, letting that man of sin from uh, being revealed, okay? It's the body of Christ. And once we get redeemed, caught up, all hell going to break loose. Okay? But right now, right now, Satan and all his ministers of righteousness are kind of like, you know, they're not doing anything against us because, I mean, they are. Don't get me wrong. Of course they are. But Satan can only do unto the body of Christ what the Lord will allow. You read the book of Job, chapters 1 and 2. You've seen you see plain evidence of this, okay? All right? Finishing verse 53, but this is your hour and the power of darkness. This is their hour and the power of darkness. We, the body of Christ, the church of the living God, are on the earth, and he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. That's us, the body of Christ. And once we people get redeemed, you're going to be left with Roman Catholicism. May the Lord have mercy on you. But this is their hour in the power of darkness. Okay? The Titanic, which was sunk by the Jesuit order, the bow of the Titanic has gone under the waves, under the, the uh, thing there, and has broken off and has plummeted to the bottom. And the rear end of the Titanic is standing upright, righting itself. But slowly the air is going out of the Titanic. That's why the, the rear end of the Titanic was so devastated. Because all the air is like, <clears throat> like that, you know. But the Titanic is sinking, going down. Doors are closing. All the doors are not closed yet. Not yet. Okay. Not yet, but doors are closing. Chances for witnessing are getting less and less. People are, are being more inclined to sin, to evil, than wanting to hear the truth. Our time, the Church of the Living God, our time is coming to an end. And then once we get redeemed, Satan and all these evil people that get left behind they're going to shine as the stars in the firmament of heaven. This is their hour in the power of darkness. Okay? L look at it. Look at it, brethren, people. Everywhere you turn, evil is good and good is evil. You got that sow pig, so-called woman, you know, calling evil good. All right? You got this disgusting fake revival happening and this sodomite friendly Jesus revolution movie coming on and then we're going to be looking at a three-year-old video on this nonsense called other Ken and you got people blurring what is a man what is a woman and you know showing contempt for what God gave them what more proof do you need 
And seriously, if you if you believe in the religion of evolution and you think that we're getting better and better as time, you're you're just plain stupid. You are you got rocks for brains, boy. You're stupid. There's no nice way to put that. Okay? You're stupid. You are absolutely stupid. Okay? And see, a little bit more about this thing, about how I mentioned about um, Satan can do nothing against the body of Christ, the church of the living God, unless it has allowed them. Okay? John chapter 19, verses 10 and 11. Okay? Then saith Pilate unto him, Speakest thou not unto me? Knowest thou not that I have power to crucify thee? And have power to release thee? Pilate, who didn't know what truth was, even though he was speaking to the embodiment of truth. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. Speaking to God the Father himself, Pilate was. And what is our Lord Jesus Christ, who is God the Father? What does he say? Jesus answered, Thou couldest have no power at all against me, except it were given thee from above. Therefore, he that delivered me on to thee hath the greater sin. And Isaiah chapter 57. Isaiah chapter 57. Verses 1 and 2. Now, I, as I spake with a dear brother last night, my best friend, uh, about this, um, is this a reference on to the redemption of the purchased possession? Probably not, but you know what? It sure does fit, doesn't it? Kind of like um, Song of Solomon, chapter 2, okay, with the redemption of the purchased possession, and also in type. In type, absolutely. What are you talking about? Well, let's read. Isaiah chapter 57, verses 1 and 2. The righteous perish, and no man layeth it to heart, and merciful men are taken away. None considering that the righteous is taken away from the evil to come. That sure does fit with uh, mentioning about the redemption of the purse dispossession, doesn't it, brethren? Sure does. He shall enter into peace. They shall rest in their beds, each one walking in his uprightness. In his uprightness. Excuse me. Excuse me. Yeah. You know, godly people who are of the church of the living God are being pulled back slowly. Slowly the Titanic is sinking. The air is being let out of that rear end of the Titanic as she's plummeting down to be lost forever. Slowly but surely. They, the doors are still open. The doors are going to be open until the Church of the Living God hears, come up hither and we go up. After that, God help you. God help you, because then we'll begin the dispensation of the time of Jacob's trouble, which is faith and works. And all you people are got, who are going to be left behind, you are being prepared for this, for that time. With the easy believism, devils, and all this nonsense, you're being prepared for it. But see, what is happening today, what is happening today, is Jeremiah chapter 6. Jeremiah chapter 6. Jeremiah chapter 6, verses 15 on to verse 17. Jeremiah chapter 6, verses 15 on to verse 17. We're going to have very, very brief expository here. We got a whole 15-minute video to go through, okay? We're going to go through the whole thing. But I want us to touch on this first because this is very important. Jeremiah chapter 6, verses 15 on to verse 17. This is today. This is applicable for us today. How so? Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Nay, they were not at all ashamed. Neither could they blush. Therefore they shall fall among them that fall. And the time, at the time that I visit them, they shall be cast down, saith the Lord. And also this is reiterated in Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 12. But people, you got guy, men out there doing things to become women. You have women doing things to become men. You are going to see this sad thing called otherkin. 
okay? Um, the the uh, pedophilia of Disney, the college, that, 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 that pig, uh, Roma army, this disgusting satanic revival, and the, can people blush anymore? Can people blush anymore? Huh? I hold your place here and go to Isaiah chapter 3. Can people blush anymore? Okay, even 30 years ago, even 30 years ago, half of the stuff that's going on today would have made even the most wicked lost uh, people be like, whoa, dude, what's going on? Okay? In even my generation, these wicked lost sinners. I'm a saved sinner, okay? We're, they're lost sinners. I'm a saved sinner, okay? Big difference. But even wicked people um, 30 years ago would look at what we got today and be like, wow, that, that's, that's bad. But see, you are being conditioned. You are being programmed by the television, by all this evil. Okay, Isaiah chapter 3, verses 9 on to verse 11. The shoe of their countenance doth witness against them, and they declare their sin as Sodom. They hide it not. Woe unto their soul, for they have rewarded evil unto themselves. Like in the community section on this channel, you look about that man and you see the Adam's apple. You see that man dressed up as a woman like with the Hershey bar. God bless America. Yeah, you want a Hershey bar? Can people blush anymore? What's next? I'll tell you what I think is next. Open acceptance of pedophilia. Because right now, the most wicked, vile, lost sinner would kind of would would cringe at pedophilia but see what the evil devils of disney are doing and stuff like that programming you to accept pedophilia it's going to get to a point you mark my words that open pedophilia that's what's next that's what's next love is love like they're pro like they're broadcasting with the jesus movement film or whatever that scum is and what are these people doing? The shoe of their countenance, you know, countenance, body, visage, face, okay? The shoe of their countenance doth witness against them. And they declare their sin is Sodom. They hide it not. They boast themselves. They are boasting. Rubbish. You look at that link in the community section about that filthy scoundrel scum man. You know, here, they have a Hershey bar. Okay, the, the facial expressions declare their sin of Sodom. And you can read some of the stuff that guy says, okay? <laughs> you know? <laughs> uh, it's like, I'm not going anywhere where they are coming for us and they, they put the they as Republicans, okay? Trying to vilify the Republican Party. Very, very clever. Very, Satan is very clever. Satan has got you people of the world in the palm of his hand. And you're just eating it up. Can't get enough. Let's continue. Say ye to the righteous that it shall be well with them, for they shall eat the fruit of their doings. Woe unto the wicked. It shall be ill with him. For the reward of his hand shall be given unto him. Shall be given him. Excuse me. Jeremiah 6, verse 16. Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the ways, and see, and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way, and walk therein? And ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said... We will not walk therein. Go back to Isaiah chapter 30. Isaiah chapter 30, verses 20 on to verse 26. Isaiah 30, on, 20 on to verse 26. <clears throat> and though the Lord give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner anymore. But thine eyes shall see thy teachers. Now this is talking about 
the reward of actually turning to the Lord after his rebuke, after chastening. Well, just, let's continue, okay? But see, we see here in Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 16, where it says, but they said, we will not walk therein. What happens if you do go for the old paths and not that crazy psycho from Old Paths Baptist Church that you see here on YouTube? Not that crazy nut, but the old paths, the old ways. Okay, what happens if you do that? Let's continue in Isaiah 30. And thine ears shall hear a word behind thee saying, this is the way, walk ye in it. When ye turn to the right hand and when ye turn to the left, Ye shall defile also the covering of thy graven images of silver and the ornament of thy molten images of gold. Thou shalt cast them away as a menstruous cloth. Thou shalt say unto it, Get thee hence. This is what happens when you turn to the Lord. Okay, instruction and righteousness for us today. You come to the Lord broken of your self-righteousness, being a man or a woman and taking responsibility and accountability. Yes, my sins put the Lord on the cross. It's because of me. It's my fault that he died. And of, in fear of him, you call upon his name and he save you. Fear him. Why? Because if he don't save you, he's going to put you in hell because you chose sin over him. Okay, you've chosen this over what the Lord has offered you freely himself. Okay, but see, you turn from your self-righteousness. You go to him broken, contrite, and in fear of him, you call upon his name and he save you. Then shall he give the rain of thy seed that thou shalt sow the ground with all and bread of the increase of the earth, and it shall be fat and plenteous. In that day shall thy cattle feed in large pastures. The oxen likewise and the young asses that ear the ground shall eat clean provender, which hath been winnowed with the shovel and with the fan. Now, actually, and doctrinally, this is talking about the uh, fulfillment of Israel, okay? Our instruction and in righteousness today, you come to the Lord and he saves you. He makes you a new creature. Okay? That doesn't automatically mean that your life is going to be peaches and cream and all roses and smell good and all that. No. But you will be seated together in heaven with the Lord. Your destination will be fixed. You will be sealed until the day of redemption. And all this light affliction that you go through. Okay? <clears throat> And we know that this is talking about future event doctrinally in this, what we're looking at, because with the shovel and with the fan winnow, okay, verse 25. And there shall be upon every high mountain and upon every high hill rivers and streams of waters in the day of the great slaughter when the towers fall. Moreover, the light of the moon shall be as light, uh, shall be as the light of the sun. And the light of the sun shall be sevenfold, as the light of seven days, in the day that the Lord bindeth up the breach of his people, and healeth the stroke of their wound. And that's talking about a future fulfillment, um, when the Jewish people re will receive their Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. But for us, an in instruction in righteousness today, okay, the Lord saves you, he makes you a new creature. He will eventually lead you on to the old paths, the authorized version of the scripture, to walk contrary to this world. But see, what does the world say? Back in Jeremiah chapter uh, 6, verse 16, Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the ways, and see, and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way, and walk therein? And ye shall find rest for your souls. But what do they say? But they said, We will not walk therein. Verse 17, also I set watchmen over you, saying, Hearken to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, We will not hearken. Jeremiah chapter 13, verses 1 on to verse 11. Jeremiah chapter 13, verses 1 on to verse 11. Thus saith the Lord unto me, Go get thee a linen girdle, and put it upon thy loins, and put it not in water. Like something that you would wear under your garment, Okay. And something that you wear under your garment is very close to you, okay? All right? Very close to you. 
an intimate piece of apparel that sticketh really close to you, kind of like a t-shirt. And men, we have underwears, you know, and stuff like that. So I got a girdle according to the word of the Lord and put it upon my loins. That tells you what this is talking about. And the word of the Lord came unto me the second time, saying, Take the girdle that thou hast got, which is upon thy loins, and arise, go to Euphrates, and hide it there in a hole of the rock. So I went and hid it by Euphrates, as the Lord commanded me. And it came to pass, after many days, that the Lord said unto me, Arise, go to Euphrates, and take the girdle from thence, which I commanded thee to hide there. Then I went to Euphrates, and digged, and took the girdle from the place where I had hid it, and behold, the girdle was marred. It was profitable for nothing. The covering that these people cover themselves with. This covering of a righteousness. But it's not of God, but of the devil. Calling evil good and good evil, you see. It's good for nothing. It's marred. Why? Because it was in the earth. It didn't come from heaven. You get it? Yeah, let's continue. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Thus saith the Lord, after this manner will I mar the pride of Judah and the great pride of Jerusalem. These people who boast in their sin and rub it in your face like that disgusting guy with the Hershey thing. Check that link out. You'll see him like, like this smiling, just boasting their sin in Sodom. And you think things are getting better. You're stupid. You are downright stupid. I can't sugarcoat it. I just telling you like it is. You're stupid if you think things are getting better. You're stupid. Willfully ignorant. You're stupid. Okay? This evil people, <laughs> which refuse to hear my words, which walk in the imagination of their heart, and walk after other gods, little G, little marionette statues, sure, but other gods, the ones that they look at in the mirror, because, hey, like Satan said, you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil, right? Okay? To serve them and to worship them shall even be as this girdle which is good for nothing. Get the comparison with this in verse 7? For as the girdle cleaveth to the loins of a man, so, I, so have I caused to cleave unto me the whole house of Israel and the whole house of Judah, saith the Lord, that they might be unto me for a people and for a name and for a praise and for a glory. But they would not hear. In Zechariah chapter 7, Zechariah chapter 7, verses 8 on verse 12, and the word of the Lord came unto Zechariah, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, Execute true judgment, and shew mercy and compassions every man to his brother, and oppress not the widow, nor the fatherless, the stranger, nor the poor, and let none of you imagine evil against his brother in your heart. And remember, who are our brothers? Those who are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God. You're not saved. You're not born again. You're not of the church of the living God. You're not my brother or my sister. Okay? Um, biologically, we might have had the same father or mother, but uh, spiritually, in reality, my father is the Lord Jesus Christ. The people of this world, their father is the devil. <clears throat> Verse 11. But they refused to hear. But they refused to hearken and pulled away the shoulder and stopped the ears that they should not hear. Yea, they made, they made their hearts as an adamant stone, lest they should hear the law and the words which the Lord of hosts has sent in his spirit by the former prophets. Therefore came a great wrath from the Lord of hosts. Job 39. Job 39. Job 39, verses 5 on verse 18. <laughs> who has set out the wild ass free? Or who hath loosed the, band, loosed 
the bands of the wild ass, whose house I have made the wilderness and the barren land his dwellings. I, this is the Lord, our Father, Jesus Christ, uh, drilling Job with a whole bunch of questions. Who are you to question what God has made? Who are you? Who are you to question what God has done? Who are you? Okay. He scorneth the multitude of the city, neither regardeth he the crying of the driver. The range of the mountains is his pasture, and he searcheth after every green thing. Will the unicorn be willing to serve thee or abide by thy crib? Now, I don't believe the unicorn here is this mythical thing that the, you know, the world has turned it into. But when people ask me, do you believe in unicorns? Yeah, I do believe there were unicorns. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. And I personally believe that the book of Job was before the flood. That is, that is what I believe, okay? All right? But uh, unicorn, uh, it's right there. And I, I believe every word of this, okay? And people talk, you know, with these uh, other kin people want to be unicorns themselves and fart rainbows and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Canest thou bind the unicorn with his band in the furrow, or will he harrow the valleys after thee? Wilt thou trust him, because his strength is great? For wilt thou leave thy labor to him? So this leads us to believe, at least to me anyway, and probably a lot of you of the Church of the Living God, that the unicorn was not this white pegasus horse with this golden horn. Rather, this was probably a horned animal, maybe uh, similar unto a rhinoceros, or something like that. Uh, people like the, you know, the Bibles talk about that this is a rhinoceros. I don't believe so. Similar there on too, maybe. I don't know. Okay. But I don't believe this was a rhinoceros as we have today. Something similar. Okay. Something similar. Remember, I believe that the book of Job was written before the flood. Okay. But that's another thing. Let's continue. Wilt thou believe him? that he will bring home thy seed and gather it into thy barn. Gavest thou the goodly wings unto the peacocks? Or wings and feathers unto the ostrich? God who made these things? And you got people like we're going to see in this video, this sad young man showing such contempt for what God made. Yourself, okay? And you're going to, I mean, with these plastic surgeries and stuff like that, We've addressed this in other videos, uh, which will be in the description box of this one. You're showing contempt with what God made. Okay? But what, you think you can, you, you know, you think you can change yourself into something that God uh, hasn't made you? And through plastic surgery, oh yeah, they can, can accomplish a lot of stuff. They can. But in the beginning, he made them male and female, man and woman. Okay, we'll, we'll read that in a second. Let's continue. Gavest thou the goodly wings unto the peacocks, or wings and feathers unto the ostrich, which leaveth her eggs in the earth, and warmeth them in the dust? This is an animal. And forgetteth that the foot may crush them, or that the wild beast may break them. She is hardened against her young ones, as though they were not hers. Her labor is in vain without fear. Fear. Okay, pay attention. Because God hath deprived her of wisdom. The tie in without fear, wisdom. And unto man, he said, The fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And uh, to depart from evil is understanding. Job 28, verse 28. The fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. Do you see the tie in with. Don't look at me! Look at the scripture. Do you see the tie in with fear? And wisdom there in verses 16 and 17. You see that? The ostrich, animals, do not have the fear of the Lord. They don't have wisdom. Okay? Of course they're going to tremble, but they have not been given the fear of the Lord. They have not been given wisdom. And as we're going to see, these other kins who want to pretend that they identify with animals... They want to be something that doesn't fear the Lord. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. Verse 17, because God hath deprived her of wisdom. 
neither hath he imparted to her understanding. Now you see wisdom and understanding. The fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. Okay? Beasts, little fluffy your dog. Mojo your cat. And the horse. Okay? Or the little cute pot belly pigs or your, your ferret or your bird. Okay? They do not have the fear of the Lord nor departing from evil. They don't know. Okay? They don't know. Why? Why? Well, let's finish this with verse 18. Because that's what I said to, right? Yes. What time she lifteth up herself on high, she scorneth the horse and his rider. Scorneth. Why? Because there's no wisdom or understanding in animals. Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1, dear friend. Okay? There will be videos in the description box where we go over this at length, but these have to be touched on. Okay? Mankind. You and I. Mankind. Which encompasses woman. Because woman means taken out of man or of man. Okay? Okay, take a rib out. And you're going to see something in this video where this disturbed young man talks up. Never mind. I got to warn you, the video we're going to be watching is pretty disturbing. Okay? Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 on to verse 28. And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Now, question, the Trinitarians love to mess with this. There will be a link in the description box where we go over this in detail. Okay, we're not going to go into detail here, but this we are going to say. That God made us, let's continue reading, verse 26, uh, 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Okay. Now people like to say that they lost the image of God with the fall. No. What is this talking about? You and I. Doesn't matter who you are. Even if you're this, this weird, whoever that is, I can't tell whether it's a man or a woman. More on that in a little bit. And this Young guy who wants to be an elf. We were made male and female. Man and woman. There's only two genders. Okay? But God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. What does that mean? We as mankind all have a spirit, a soul, and a body. Comprised of three Spirit, soul, and body. Okay? Everybody who believes in the Godhead uh, like to say it backwards, body, soul, and spirit. Scripturally, it's spirit, soul, and body, but in a small matter. Okay? We are made in the image of God because we have a spirit, soul, and body. That, my friend, we have not lost. Okay? Verse 28. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And see, man, mankind, was created, as we just saw, to have dominion over these things, and you're going to see these pathetic, and I'm saying that in love, these pathetic people who want to identify as if they're wolves, or cats, or an elf, or, it's pathetic. It's pathetic. They're showing contempt with what God has made. Us. Okay? And also, too, Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Today is the third. Did you read Ecclesiastes chapter 3? I know some of you did. Okay? Ecclesiastes 3, verses 16 on to verse... No, Proverbs read. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 16 on to 21. If I would ever get there... <laughs> Okay, verses 16 on verse 21. Ecclesiastes chapter 3. And moreover I saw under the sun the place of judgment, that wickedness was there, and the place of righteousness, that iniquity was there. I said in mine heart, God shall judge the righteous and the wicked, 
For there is a time there for every purpose and for every work. What are we talking? Verse 21, yes. And I said in mine heart concerning the estate of the sons of men, that God might manifest them, and that they might see that they themselves are beasts. Now, some would like to uh, twist this and say, see, we're, you know, and turn this into evolutionary thing. No. What he's saying is that men are acting like beasts, which have no fear of the Lord nor understanding. Or else, we, or else Solomon would be contradicting what is already written in Scripture. No, he's referring to them, uh, mankind, as what? That they themselves are beasts. Meaning what? Having no fear of the Lord or no departing from, uh, departing from evil. He's not saying that man and beast are the same thing. He's not saying that at all. Okay, why? We'll prove it. Let's keep reading. Okay? For that which befalleth the sons of men befalleth beasts. And even one thing befalleth them. As one dieth, so dieth the other. Yea, they have all one breath, so that man hath no preeminence above a beast, for all is vanity. What does that mean? What is he talking about? We're all going to die. Okay? We all breathe air. Animals die. We are going to die. Okay, that's what he's talking about. Okay, you twisted, sick people who want to come to this and say, see, man and beast, we're one. We're, we are just like beasts. No, he is talking about you who are wicked, lost sinners going to hell. You're acting like beasts in that you have no fear of the Lord and no departing from evil and that you boast your sin as Sodom. You flaunt it. You can't blush. That's what Solomon is talking about here. That's what he's talking about here. And verse 20 again. All go unto one place. All are of dust and all turn to dust again. All go to one place. What does that mean? Okay. You got to remember before. And brother, you asked me about Saul. Okay. When Samuel said to Saul, this day you will be with me. Uh, remember. Samuel was called up because Abraham's bosom was in the earth, okay? Because the way to heaven was not opened yet because the perfect sacrifice was sin, for sin was not made yet. And paradise is being with the Lord Jesus Christ. So people in the Old Testament, when they died, they went down into Abraham's bosom, okay? No, King Saul is not in heaven. Samuel is, yes, because remember, the Lord went down to the spirits that were in prison, held in Abraham's bosom, and he's like, okay, let's go, and psh, okay, all right, so remember, dispensationally, rightly dividing the word of truth, okay, all go unto one place, we all die, all are of the dust, and all turn to dust again, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, that kind of thing, okay, meaning that we all die, okay, Meaning that the decaying carcass of a possum that you see that got hit by a car, eventually that's going to return to the earth. Okay, that's what that's talking about. Watch out for these very subtle and clever Christians who want to try to say that, you know, these idiotic Christians who say, well, the scriptures actually teach that the earth is billions of years old. You know, ascribe to the gap theory. Nonsense. Nonsense. Okay, hold, hold on. Okay, I've got to write this down for links, okay? But uh, nonsense, okay? Nonsense. We all die. And the body that was made of the dust of the earth is going to turn into that again eventually, okay? Verse 21. Who knoweth the spirit of man that goeth upward, okay? And the spirit of the beast that goeth downward to the earth. What does this mean? Man was created in the image of God. We have a spirit, we have a soul, we have a body. Okay? And we both see here uh, the spirit because unto man, it's, uh, it's appointed unto man once to die and then after that the judgment. Okay? All right? But see this, it's talking about the spirit because God gave us all life. But see, man, this is what this is talking about, man has a spirit soul and body the soul that you have is not yours 
It was made by God. Soul was made by God. Okay? Animals, dear friend, they don't have a soul. Fluffy isn't going to be in heaven with you. Fido, Milo, or Mojo, whatever your pet name is, uh, they're not going to be in heaven with you because they do not have a soul. Okay? Why would someone want to mimic, want to be with something, want to identify with something that doesn't have a soul? I leave that to you to ponder. Now, let's get to this video. Let's get to this video. I have to warn you. This is, um, this is pathetic. This is simply, oh yeah, if you want to see this video yourself, just put in other kin in the YouTube search. The very video that we're going to be looking at will come up. Okay. Now, we're going to go through this entire video. Okay. And wrote down some points here to talk about. So, let's go. Okay. Let's go. Prepare yourself. All right. A subculture who socially and spiritually identify as not entirely human. The origin of Otherkin can be traced back to Elfenkind Digest, a mailing list started in 1990 by a student at the University of Kentucky for elves and interested observers. Since then, the Otherkin community has thrived both online and in real life, with members largely identifying as mythical creatures such as dragons, elves, fairies, animals, and aliens. My name's Anne. Right away, right away. Turn in the authorized version of the scriptures to Daniel chapter 4. People wanting to identify as dragons. Oh, like the red dragon, Satan. I remember in uh, Isaiah chapter, what is that, 14? Huh? Huh? 12 on verse 15, where Satan talks about how, she, how he shall be as the most high. I almost said she, excuse me, okay? Daniel chapter 4. Daniel chapter 4. Daniel chapter 4. King Nebuchadnezzar. King Nebuchadnezzar had a dream. Uh, King Nebuchadnezzar had a dream about something that was going to happen to him. King Nebuchadnezzar was a servant of the Lord. He served the Lord uh, basically at first unknowingly. He was the Lord's tool. But eventually King Nebuchadnezzar got it into his head. It's like, wow. There's only one God, okay? Basically, all right? And he was given a dream showing him of what was going to happen to him because he wouldn't give credit onto the Lord for doing things through him. And yes, I believe that King Nebuchadnezzar is in heaven today, okay? But Daniel chapter 4, verses 13 on to verse 17. Here, here's the warning that King Nebuchadnezzar had. I saw in a vision of my of my head upon my bed, and behold, a watcher and an holy one came down from heaven. He cried aloud and said thus, Hew down the tree and cut off his branches, shake off his leaves and scatter his fruit. Let the beasts get away from under it and the fowls from his branches. Nevertheless, leave the stump of his roots in the earth, even with a band of iron, and brass in the tender grass of the field and let it be wet with the dew of heaven and let his portion be with the beasts in the grass of the earth. Verse 16, let his heart be changed from man's and let a beast's heart be given unto him and let seven times pass over him. This, I'm looking at my notes, this matter is by the decree of the watchers and by and the demand by the word of the holy ones to the intent that the living may know that the most high our lord jesus christ god our father ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whomsoever he will and setteth up over it the basest of men nothing happens without god say so satan comes along in luke chapter 4 and says all this has been given to me and i give it to whosoever i will if you fall down and worship me, I'll shall be thine. See, Satan wants to be God. But Satan can't do 
outside of what the Lord will allow, okay? And King Nebuchadnezzar, it says here that a beast's heart was going to be given to him. That he was going to be uh, going from a rational man and be acting like a beast as a form of judgment against him. Why? In this same chapter, go to verse 28 on to verse 33. Okay? And he is warned by Daniel. Hey, don't think so highly of yourself. Don't think that you've done this. The Lord has given you the ability to do this. Okay, he used you to get the job done. And this was mercy on the King Nebuchadnezzar. Okay, so Nebuchadnezzar is in heaven. Okay, what? but Daniel warned him. It's like, hey, you know, break off your sins by doing righteousness. That it might be a lengthening of that kingdom. But see, Nebuchadnezzar thought that he was the stuff imparting it to his, his God, okay? At the time, his father was Satan. But as we see, and you read Daniel chapter 4 on your own time, uh, King Nebuchadnezzar repented. He's in heaven, absolutely, because he realized the truth. But what it took to accrue onto that truth, oh boy. Daniel chapter 4, verses 28 on to verse 33. All this came upon the king Nebuchadnezzar. At the end of 12 months, he walked in the palace of the kingdom of Babylon. The king spake and said, look at this. Is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom? For the house of the kingdom by the might, and by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty? Ooh, talk about pride. Yeah, King Nebuchadnezzar was, I did all this. This happened because of me. No, it happened because the Lord used King Nebuchadnezzar and allowed it to happen. But see, King Nebuchadnezzar is like, look at me, I am a God. Being able to decide what is good and evil. Being able to decide what he can do with his own life. And interestingly enough, how we looked about the difference uh, between man and beast. While the word was in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven saying, O King Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken, the kingdom is departed from thee, and they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts. A beast who has no wisdom or understanding. And thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. They shall make thee to eat grass as oxen. And seven times shall pass over thee. Until thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men. And giveth it to whomsoever he will. The same hour was the thing fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar. And he was driven from men, and did eat grass as oxen, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven, till his hairs were grown like eagles' feathers, and his nails like birds' claws. So a rational man, because of judgment, because he thought so highly of himself, as judgment against him, given over onto the mind of being like a beast, Woe unto those who call evil good and good evil. And of course, if you were to read King Nebuchadnezzar, his, his sense came back to him and he's like, you're God, you're, you're the Lord, I praise you. And, and the, uh, let's read the final verse in um, uh, Daniel chapter 4. Nebuchadnezzar came around. Nebuchadnezzar is in heaven today because of this. Verse 37. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and exol, extol and honor the king of heaven. All whose works are truth, and his ways judgment, and those that walk in pride he is able to abase. Hence, King Nebuchadnezzar is in heaven. But see, this kind of thing, what we just looked at, is what these sad, pathetic people are emulating. Let's continue. Not even 28 seconds in. Anthony Padilla. And today, I'm going to be sitting down with other kin to learn the truth behind this mysterious community 
and how they operate in the 21st century. Have other kin transcended our trivial human reality, this. enabling them to connect with other mythical and astral worlds? Or are they just perverse humans unable to cope with the day-to-day -day interactions necessary to survive in modern society? Um, you don't want to be Hugh Man. You look up what Hugh was and a Hugh Man, okay? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Manly Palmer Hall, uh, The Secret Teaching of All Ages, I believe he talks about that too. Um, you know, you, you know, even if you are lost, you should really drop the word human from your vocabulary. I'm just saying. Let's continue. Hi, Naya. <laughs> now, I don't, I don't, there, this, this person, my spirit soul, and look at the peace symbol, temporal and, uh, spiritual and temporal, that's a sign of the Vatican, is this person a Jesuit? I doubt it, but, uh, the, the same father. This person has feminine features, but I'm going to say this. I do not know whether this person is a female or a male. I do not honestly know. I, I still do not honestly know whether the, the posture is there. The, 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 I don't know. I don't know. Is this a female? Maybe. Is it a male? I, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, let's continue. Hi, Luis. Hello, nice to meet you. Thank you so much for coming out and teaching me about the wondrous world of Otherkin. Yeah, thank you for inviting me. So what do you consider yourself? Otherkin, just non-human, or...? I try to become an elf. You're trying to become an elf? Yeah, I'm doing a lot of plastic surgery, like, you know, fantasy uh, kind of features in uh -huh. my face and body. Luis, you're not gonna see this. Young man, you are showing contempt with what God gave you. You start doing this to yourself because you have such contempt for what God gave you. The impossible is possible with God, but your chances of genuinely being saved. The impossible is possible with God. Just about, just like when a man goes to and, uh, this is sad, but but get this. To become something that it not doesn't look really natural. I consider myself a British Columbia wolf and red fox theory. Yeah. So yes. it's, that's different than other kin, or is it in the same realm? So other kin is more of an umbrella term. So other kin. Is that a, a male or a female? I don't know. For the remainder, I, because they call it calls itself Wolf Girl. So let, let's, for the sake of the video, refer to that as a female girl or woman. But I don't know. It refers to people who identify in some way as non-human. Therian is a more specific term referring to animals that are living or were once living on this earth. Basically, if it really existed in, in the realm of reality. Right. That oh, like a unicorn, maybe? <laughs> Nonsense here. That would be Therian. So what does being other kin entail? You identify usually spiritually or psychologically or both. I've, I've seen cases where it's been neither, but you have this deep identification as something that is not human. Uh, for me, it's wolf. Being another kin means that you don't feel entirely or completely human. In my case, it's something non-related to reality. I'm trying to become something from fantasy. What non- 
Something from fantasy. Did you get that? And Satan's right there. I mean, they can do all kinds of stuff, but wow. He's showing contempt with what God gave him. The impossible is possible with God. This pathetic, sad Luis, the odds on that man actually getting saved are very slim. The impossible is possible with God. But I, I'm just saying, let's continue. Human species or kin type do you identify as? Do you know what Pleiadians are? Pleiadians? Yeah. No. They are a kind of elves that comes from space. They are beings from love and light and they live in space and care about the earth. Love and light. Doesn't that look so pretty? Ezekiel chapter 28. Now, I know we've touched on these verses in the past three videos, including this one today. But with what the Lord has been doing recently, Ezekiel chapter 28 again. Verses 15 on to verse 19. This is talking about Satan. Okay? Thou was perfect in the way, thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created, till iniquity was found in thee. Yes, Satan was is a created being. He had all these uh, jewels, precious stones on him. He is the son of the morning, not the morning star, okay? Bright light because of all that glittering um, uh, precious stones, okay? Doesn't that look so beautiful? Doesn't it? You can't tell whether that's a male or a female, that, that picture right there, okay? You can't? Verse 16. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore will I cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings, that they may behold thee. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities, by, thy iniqui by the iniquity of thy traffic. Therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee. It shall devour thee, and I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. All they that know thee among the people shall be astonished at thee. Thou shalt be a terror, and never shalt thou be any more. Because of the brightness of the light, love and light. You heard what that guy said himself. And of course, we've been over these verses three times this week, but we're going through it again. 2 Corinthians 11, verses 13 on to verse 15. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. Now these people don't claim to be even Christian. Good for that. But what are they claiming? What This, this guy himself said it. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Ministers of righteousness. See, right away you think only in terms of the religious sphere. But a minister of righteousness can be a doctor, a lawyer, a closet pig feminazi sow, or some tragic girl, a woman, and man who think, who want to be like a beast who has no wisdom or understanding and wants to be an angel of light. You, you think things are getting better, huh? This video, by the way, is three years old. Incredible. Let's continue. Come on. And I really like it. So you are a creature built on love and light from space. Exactly. When did you first become cognizant that you were other kin? So when I was about 10 or 11, 
Easy Wheels started oh, for as a college project. I and beg your pardon. Now Can I skip this? Yes, this is disgusting, these stupid ads. Then um, I had this friend on this Danny Phantom, you know, the cartoon of Hell yeah. Oh, and yeah. I met this girl. I had this friend when you identify. When did you identify as so and so? Okay. When I had a friend, a blah, 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 blah. Psalm 58. Psalm 58. Okay. Uh, let's, let's back this up a little bit. Okay. Sorry, hopefully they don't play that again. Space. Exactly. When did you first become cognizant that you were other kin? So when I was about 10 or 11, um, I had this friend on this Danny Phantom, you know, the cartoon of Hell yeah. Form, and I met this girl about my age and we became friends. And she went into this anime phase. You have to watch Wolf's Rain. What is Wolf's You have to watch it. I'm not going to tell you the plot. You just have to watch it. So I watch it. I see, you know, the intro with Kiba, that's the main character, the white wolf, and I'm like, this is me. So How automatically is... when you saw right. the intro. Right, so I did a bunch of research. I watched all sorts of documentaries on wolves. I read all I could about wolves. And by age 12, I knew I was a wolf. By age 12, this person knew that they were a wolf. Hmm. Psalm 58 verses 1 on verse 3. Do ye indeed speak righteousness, O congregation? Do ye judge uprightly, O ye sons of men? Yea, in heart ye work wickedness. Ye weigh the violence of your hands in the earth. The wicked are strange from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. So at 12 years old, this woman, okay, this woman <laughs> said, well, I'm a wolf. Uh, little, uh, little girl, if you are a girl, um, euphemistic language is changing something to change something. Uh, for example, like I've said to you, shell shock uh, is now post-traumatic stress disorder. So because they change the wording, hence you change the condition. You do all these changes to your body as if you're going to change what you are. At the great white throne of judgment, you are not going to be seen by God as a wolf. You're not going to be seen by God as an elf angel of light. Uh, you're going to be seen as man or woman. Okay? All right. All right. Yeah, yeah. Continue. If there were a way to permanently alter every aspect of your body to represent the species that you identify with, would you do it? I will be taller. Yeah. I will be transparent. I will have very big eyes. <laughs> I will have my hair super long. Uh, and does not nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it is an abomination onto him? If I just, I brad eyes, excuse me, but I used to have long hair too. <laughs> I like my hair short. Maybe floating and stuff, but well, that's not possible. So I stay with the things I can do with surgery. My next surgery, for example, will be a mask under my skin. A under mask the, under your yeah, skin? Yeah, my entire chin, my entire jawline, my cheekbones and my eyebrows. So yeah, it's basically like a plastic mask under my face. Is that to completely alter the shape of your face? Do you remember Angelina Jolie in Maleficent? Well, yes. I might do something like that. You're gonna look like Angelina Jolie in Maleficent? Maybe, I'm still deciding because it's uh, really extreme, but I like extreme. Uh -huh. Second Timothy chapter three, verses one on to verse five. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. So this disturbing, Pathetic man, um, showing contempt for what God gave him, spirit, soul, and body, and wants to change it. First Timothy chapter three. Who who is the God of this Luis's life? Satan, but he's worshiping himself, and he doesn't even like himself. Well, now he does because he's messed with what God gave him. 
This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, incontinent fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures, more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. Now we as a church of the living God, uh, you skip down to verses 12 on to verse 13, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. We as the church of the living God, we are to align our lives according to the scriptures, especially for us today with the doctrine that is specific for us today in this dispensation. We fashion our lives around the scriptures to be other than that. People like this are, have also an antichrist form of godliness. Think about it. They don't want to be like this, but they are doing things according to their father, the devil, disfiguring their body. Okay? All right? We are made new creatures in Christ by that circumcision made without hands when we come to the Lord on his terms. This Luis and that woman beforehand, they go to the devil. And the devil is making a way. You, when you hear some of these things that this Luis will do and has done, it will make you cringe. It will. It will. Okay? It will. But these people are lovers of their own selves. And they are, think about it, people. They are putting forth a form of godliness. What God? The God of this world. Okay, they're not doing things of the world. I mean, my, uh, atheists and other people would be like, dude, that's sick. But because of this false love that this Christianity preaches, hey, I'm not going to judge you. I, I love everybody. Hey, that's not for you. But hey, we love you anyway. You see? You see this web that Satan is weaving here? And, and you, you, you think things are getting better. You think mankind is getting better by accepting? No. No, dear friend. If you think this, if you think this is man evolving into a better, moral, significant creature, you are downright stupid. God have mercy on your stupid, stupid soul. Oh. Let's continue. Let's continue. Okay. Uh, How many plastic surgeries have you had? It's around 30. I did my vampire hairline. I did my nose two times. I changed my eye color. This is contact lens, of course. Yeah. Was that your the worst pain you've ever felt in your life? Actually, no. The worst was in my eyes, but for the shape. You changed the I shape had, of your yeah, eyes? Yeah, I had cantopexy. It's like um, they put threads in your eyes and then they pull so your eyes turn like, you know, like the cat ones. There's thread in your eye and they change. Yeah. In the one video, um, which will be in the description box, this one guy who <laughs> had surgery on his vocal cords and like as with a guitar, you know, brother, how you tune your guitar, they tuned his vocal cords as if they were tuning a guitar string. This is what Satan offers. This is the length that man will go to to be as gods. Ah, you can't see. I got goosebumps, man. Threads in his eyes. Watch the shape of your eyeball. And that one was terrible. I screamed when I woke up from the surgery. It was so bad that I wanted to tear my eyes apart because they hurt so much. It was like razors in my eyeball. When you're feeling your most authentic, do you have any go-to things that you do to embrace your other kind of identity? There's something called mental shifting. And men mental shifting. 
mental shifting. Now, I didn't really look that hard into this, but um, NLP, a video that the Lord gave me a while ago, NLP, um, the link will be in the description box. Uh, that was done at a time when I didn't reveal, show my face, uh, but this is mind control. This is a form of NLP uh, where you, you know, my, brainwash yourself basically. But, okay, uh, Habakkuk chapter 1. Habakkuk chapter 1. Okay? Habakkuk chapter 1. We want verses. I, I just had it. Habakkuk chapter 1, verses 5 on to verse 11. Okay? Mental shifting, form of mind control, of self hypnosis, if you will. Very, very wicked, okay? Very wicked. And note this thing that we're paused on, okay? Habakkuk 5, ch uh, chapter 1. Habakkuk chapter 1, verse 5 on to verse 11. And remember how we already looked at in uh, Daniel about how um, King Nebuchadnezzar was saying, all this I did for the glory, of, for my glory and for my kingdom, Okay? Basically accounting himself as God. Okay? Habakkuk chapter 1 verse 5 and verse 11. Behold ye among the heathen and regard and wonder marvelously. For I will do, for I will work a work in your days which ye will not believe. Though it be told you. For lo, am I still recording? Yes. Yes. For lo, I raise up the Chaldeans, that bitter and hasty nation, which shall march through the breadth of the land to possess the dwelling places that are not theirs. They are terrible and dreadful. Their judgment and their dignity shall proceed of themselves. Their horses also are swifter than the leopards and are more fierce than the evening wolves. And their horsemen shall spread themselves. And their horsemen shall come from far. They shall fly as the eagle that hasteth to eat. The freedom to do evil. Hmm? Yeah. They shall come all for violence. Their faces shall sup up as the east wind. And they shall gather their captivity as the sand. And they shall scoff at the kings. And the princes shall be a scorn unto them. They shall deride every stronghold. For they shall heap dust and take it. Then shall his mind change, and he shall pass over and offend, imputing this power onto his lowercase g God. Imparting this what? Power onto his God. Not the God of the scriptures, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, but the little G God of this world. So all this evil that these people are doing, they are exactly this. They're flying in freedom, free to do sin. They boasted of Sodom. They can't blush. Nobody blushes anymore. And they're imparting this power onto their God. The one they look at in the mirror. And when you're doing that, you are likening yourself unto your father, the devil. Kind of like what King Nebuchadnezzar did. Look at what I did. This is all me. Basically calling himself God. Mental shifting is when a Therian gets kind of their mindset becomes more like their stereotypes. So I would be or devil possessed become more wolf like. Mm -hmm. um, so if I'm out in the woods, I'm full on wolf. Like if I'm with close friends, what's the problem? Yeah, and what so, are you doing when you're out there? Um, so we're running around. We do kind of play it as wolves. Like on all fours? Uh, at times, yes. Sometimes we're two legged, making wolf vocal. I'm calling this a woman, the one on uh, your left. 
I can't see an Adam's apple there, but I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Stuff, but here's something I might do when I'm out there as far as a howl. Sure. Embarrassing. If you are one, and I'm young, young lady, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. A beast doesn't have a soul. A beast is without the fear of the Lord or departing from evil, and that's what you want to be. Shame on you. You poor wretched creature. But wait, 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 wait. How'd you feel when doing that? Good. Like, it gets me. It Your gets eyes me, teared up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it does get me like it puts me in this space where it, it's a release it's yeah. all of my build up all of my what I have to repress throughout the day yeah. it like comes out in that howl Second Peter chapter 2 Second Peter chapter 2 verses 12 on to verse 14 But these as natural brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed speak evil of the things that they understand not and shall utterly perish in their own corruption and shall receive the reward of unrighteousness as they that count it pleasure to riot in the daytime. Spots they are in blemishes, sporting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you. As they walk amongst us, having eyes full of adultery, and that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls, and heart they have exercised with covetous practices, cursed children. And what are we reading on to? Right there, cursed children. Cursed children. Want to be a wolf? And also, Jude. Jude 10, uh, Jude 10 and 13, okay? Jude 10 and 13. But these speak evil of those things which they know not, but what they know naturally as brute beasts, and those things they corrupt themselves. Oh, I'm getting back to my primal thing. Yeah, you're acting like the devil you are. And that mental shifting or whatever, devil possession. Yeah. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain and ran greedily after the heir of Balaam for reward and perished in the gainsaying of Koray. These are spots in your feasts of charity while they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear, Clouds they are without water, carried about of winds, trees whose fruit withereth, without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots. Raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame. Wandering stars, to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. And that's, and that's the tragic thing here. This, this young lady and that young man, this young woman, that, that ain't a lady. But these, these people, because they are doing this, because they have chosen... Satan himself is laughing at these people, you know? Sad. It's, it's tragic. And the impossible is possible with God. But especially that Luis... Oh, you, you, you're making it real hard for yourself, son. Oh. Let's continue. Come on. Do you hold being an other kin as a secret or do you publicly announce it? On all levels except physical, I am a wolf. I mean, I'm a meme, right? <laughs> you can't, you yeah, can't yeah, undo yeah. a meme. You're not a wolf. You're of mankind. <laughs> you're, a, you're a woman, okay? You have a spirit, you have a soul, you have a body, okay? 
You were made in the image of God. You have a spirit. You have a soul. You have a body. But what you are trying to emulate doesn't have a soul. Has no fear of the Lord nor understanding. Okay? Nor departing from evil. You're sick. The only one who can save you is the Lord. You have given yourself unto the devil and you are his play toy. You poor wretched creature. You poor wretched creature. I, I feel badly for these people. And you're going to see that one Louise is like, well, that's your problem. When you stand before the great white throne of judgment, You know, oh, you know, maybe some of these people will grow out of it because, you know, the demographic for this is youthful. But, I mean, come on. The, here's evolution for you, people. Let's continue. You, you're, not a, you're not a fan of that meme? That was a misrepresentation of me. That was a misrepresentation of a community that I'm a, I'm a big part of and that I'm deeply ashamed of myself for letting down. Metro tiene cinco G sin límites por solo 25 oh, dólares. Cállate. When it comes to citing sources, details oh, what? matter. Oh, no. Introducing grammar citations skip? features. In furries. Oh, in no. Group. Oh, no. Oh. All right. Sorry about that. I messed that all up. So let's continue. Um, now I'm going to have to put these two together. So... Uh, let's let's continue. Let's continue. ...that I'm a, I'm a big part of and that I'm deeply ashamed of myself for letting down. Mm. And that I do, I, I regret that deeply. Sorry. Has identifying as other kin altered your eating habits? I'm Savage oh. AF. There's this scene in the logo doc okay. of me just like cheering up pizza. Yeah. And even after that was filmed, uh, people were like, my friend who was who was in it with me, Naya, do you, are you sure? Like, do you want that? On? That's how I eat. I actually will eat myself if I remove my ribs. Wait. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? I will actually eat myself if I remove my own ribs. Let's continue thinking about that. Wait. There's a surgery I like that it's the rib removal to have a like a waist, like a really nice tight waist. Okay. And I was thinking doing like a barbecue with my own ribs sounds like really extreme and strange and I would love to see how I taste. You're saying And I believe him. This Luis said that he would remove his own ribs in order to see how he tasted. So he could The impossible is possible with God. But oh, wow. If you, you talk about someone who probably has gone past the point of no return. Wow. Let's continue. That you would get your ribs removed to have a thinner waist and then you would eat your ribs over a barbecue to know how you taste? That's exactly what I'm saying. How important do you feel it is to alter your appearance to, to look like the the other kin that you identify as. Well, it's very important because it's, that's how I feel. So yeah. if I don't like how I look in the mirror, how I will like somebody else or like the life I'm living, so... Mm -hmm. I would love a quad suit. Yeah. If any of you want to get me a quad suit, hit me up. <laughs> Yo, if you want to donate a quad suit, how much do those cost? I have no idea. There are a few thousand, I think. If you want to donate a couple <laughs> thousand dollars to Naya. The wolf girl fine. <laughs> how do your parents feel about you being other kin? Indifferent. Indifferent? Uh, completely, completely not? Completely indifferent. But supportive? Um, they're not not supportive. I think at this point, it's just become so normalized because yeah. they've lived dealing with it yeah that it's just it, it doesn't shock or phase or they just say oh my wolf that. child yeah my family wasn't very supportive at first because you know plastic surgery is a really extreme decision to do are they supportive now they family? are supportive now because they have seen all the positive things that bring to my life socially in work uh, love you know confident you know yeah it's 
obvious that this guy is a sodomite. Um, obvious. I'm just saying. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Continue. And just happiness in general. Has being other kin affected any of your other relationships? I've been rejected a few times when they realized I was kin. You were rejected because oh, yeah. of it? But I've also made, like, it's also caused me to find some amazing people. How do you feel when you're rejected for that? If you're gonna reject me, yeah. and right, there's a million different facets of Naya Okami, yeah. there's a million different facets of Anthony Padilla, right? Now this, this bothered me about a million different facets, okay? Th this bothered me. Now, yes, there are different parts of me, but what you're going to hear, here, hold on. When you're, when you're done with, with this, everywhere you go, you're not the Smosh guy or the, right. or the YouTube guy or yeah. the, you have all these different thoughts and beliefs and. It okay, did you hear that? When you're off of this YouTube thing, you're not the YouTube guy, okay? Um, for example, let's say you watch a Hollywood movie and you go to the premiere and the star of the movie is there and you go to meet that star and you shake the hand with that star. You're shaking hands with the star, not the character in the movie, right? Right? So what she was saying onto this this guy it's like so see who you are on camera is not who you are outside of that i take a big issue with that you know why i take a big issue with that uh first corinthians chapter 15 first corinthians chapter 15 and herein i think lies a lot of these christian preachers that you see a performance on a camera, and then once the camera is off, there's something else entirely. Okay? This, this bothered me. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 8 on to verse 11. Paul talking. And last of all, he was seen of me also as one born out of due time. For I am the least of the apostles, that I'm not meet to be called an apostle because I persecuted the Christians. Oh, excuse me, because I persecuted the church of God. I'm not a Christian. If you're saved, deal with it. Neither are you. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. So that means that uh, because of the, what Paul just said there in verse 10, uh, well, I was a murderer, so I should continue being a murderer. No, no. What, by the grace of God, I am what I am? What does that mean? And his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Therefore, whether it were I or they, so we preached, and so ye believed. I am what I am. What was Paul? What was Paul? A Christ-dependent, saved sinner. Okay? That's what Paul was. Okay? 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 15. This is a faithful saying, and worthy of all acceptation, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. Okay? Paul was the chief of sinners. He said that he was the chief of sinners. Okay? He said he was the least of all of the apostles. The least. Okay? And also in first, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Verse 9 and 10. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God which raiseth the dead, who delivered us from so great a death, and doth deliver, in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. Paul, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 10. By the grace of God, I, I am what I am. What does that mean? A saved sinner, the least of all, Christ-dependent. Not boasting himself of who he was. He was one person, spirit, soul, and body. Okay? 
in Christ Jesus, a saved sinner, okay? The Paul you met was the Paul you heard of and so on. For example, the person that you are seeing speaking to you and yelling, yes, this same person, spirit, soul, and body, if you were to meet me in person, the same person that you are seeing on the camera is the same one you're going to meet outside your door in person. It's the same person you are going to talk to over the phone. The same person you are going to have Skype communication with. The same person you are going to have email correspondence with. Okay? This is not an act. Okay? This, I, once this goes off, I'm not one way in on camera and one way off of camera. Okay? There are different facets to us as individuals. Yes, but what that woman said to this guy, this, who you are doing this interview, that's not who you are off of the camera. The person you are seeing, dear people, is the person you are going to meet out in public, you're going to talk to over the telephone, that you're going to have email correspondence with, that you're going to have Skype with. It's the same person. By the grace of God, I am what I am. And what am I? A saved sinner, a sinner who is chief, dependent upon Christ Jesus. Oh yeah, there's different um, facets to who the saved sinner is. Sure. But see, person you are seeing is the person you are going to get. I take a big issue with it. I did. I, when I heard that especially, it's like, wait a minute. And see, some of these Christian preachers, they put on their suit and tie, they put on a, a fancy schmancy shirt, they use computer generated backgrounds and whatnot. They put on the teaching. You, those of you who know me, who speak to me, you know my, my mannerisms, that this is who I am. Okay? A saved sinner, a sinner who is chief, a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ, God my Father, okay? Your brother, okay? This is who I am. This is what you see is what you get, okay? Let's see what this, this girl, woman said to him about that. I took a big issue with that, okay? I did, I did. All right, and see if you gotta pretend to be something while well, something totally else while the camera is off, like all the devils that um, I'm aware of, every single one of them. You know, they're this soft, soft-spoken individual on camera, on camera. But then you get them off camera, they're just like the devil himself. What you see is what you get, boy. He said, I, 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 took a, I took a great offense at that, what this person was saying. But let's continue. If you're going to reject all of that without knowing it because I identify in a wolf-like way, you're lost. What are some of the biggest ways your life has been altered? You're not a wolf. <laughs> you're not a wolf. Okay? You're not a wolf since you realize that you're not entirely human. Actually, when it started, it was kind of bad because I got bullied from being so different and the bullying was extreme. Being obligated to eat acid, for example. Eat acid? Acid, yeah. Or thrown boiling water or cold names People or stuff that was the People throw boiling water at you? Yeah. make that mistake again. And how long? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, brethren. I'm sorry, people. And it, 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 they don't give me the ability to skip it. Isn't that nice? Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, the moon landing. Yeah. 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 All right. A lot, of it, a lot of extreme stuff. I I'm have sorry. many scars from that. Don't worry. I actually think that everything happens for a reason. You know, they bullied me because I was different. But right now, people love me for the same reasons I was bullied before. People love me for the same reasons I was bullied before. And you know why that is, son? Is because Satan is preparing mankind for the arrival of that man of sin, the son of perdition. 
you look around. Sin is in. Sin is normal now. Okay? That's why you are being accepted. Because sin is in. You are living in sin. You are showing contempt with what God gave you. And this world is falling to pieces. That's why you are accepted. <coughs> Not out of a love of truth, but for a love of evil. Okay? But, but listen to what this guy says. Many people uh, say the word sorry. How does that make you feel when they apologize? Uh, actually, kind of good for them because um, I know now that people is changing. Not, not, not just them. All the world is changing. Um, they are more compre comprehensive. Uh, they are more open-minded. The love is growing and that's what we need because the world is ending and we have to. And the world is ending. Did you hear what he said? People are more um, understanding and more loving. No, no, son, no, no. Jeremiah chapter 8. No, son, no. You sad, sad, pathetic young man. You sad creature. No, it's Jeremiah 8.12. Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Nay, nay, they were not at all ashamed, neither could they blush. Therefore shall they fall among them that fall. In the time of their visitation, they shall be cast down, saith the Lord God. It is as we have already looked at in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 5. People are lovers of their own selves. That's why, son, you are being accepted. You are being accepted because evil is rampant. Okay? You are being accepted. You people who fall into this, okay? You are being accepted because of Isaiah chapter 5, okay? Verses 20 under verse 23. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. Woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine and men of strength to mingle strong drink. Verse 23, which justify the wicked for reward and take away the righteousness of the righteous from him. That is why you are being accepted, young man. Not because man is evolving into a higher moral plane. No, but because man is going down the toilet. That's why... The world is ending. He's right. He's right. And you know when his world is going to end? When we, the church of the living God, come up hither and we get caught up and then that man of sin, the son of perdition, get, re get revealed. Because he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Then this young man's happy little go lucky world of everybody loving and every it's not that it's out of truth it's that everybody has been lulled to sleep and sin is in what what's next but see as i say to you i had what i live by said back to me yesterday by our dear brother a dear brother, and I tell, and I, 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 I live by this. Who did the Lord save today who wasn't saved yesterday? Because last night I was talking with my best friend. It's like, <laughs> you know, seeing all this nonsense. And it's just, oh man, come on, Lord, come on. When are we going to get out of here? Come on, Lord, get me out of here. But you see, Brethren, that is selfish. It is. I want out of here. My wife wants out of here. You, my brethren and sister, we want out of here. But you know what? That is selfish. 
Why? Because who did the Lord save today that wasn't saved yesterday? Because once we get taken up, then this young man's world that he says, you know, the world is ending, then that world where everyone works together, love unconditionally, that people are being prepared for. Once we, the church of the living God, are taken up, that's what you're going to get. Love each other and work together to make this a better place. Before this can be that. haven if we this all put our hands together. If we all put our hands together and wait, 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 wait. Yeah, 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 clap. Kelly wants to know. Clap, you fool. But did you hear what that guy said? Okay, did you hear what he said? Well, no, Brad, you were pausing it. Okay, okay, let's go back a little bit. Okay, all right, all right. Your loss. What are some of the biggest ways your life has been altered since you realize that you're not entirely human? Actually, when it started, it was kind of bad because I got bullied from being so different and the bullying was extreme. Being obligated to eat acid, for example. Eat acid? Acid, yeah. Or thrown boiling water or cold names People or would stuff throw that was boiling the boiling water at you? Yeah. A lot of it, a lot of extreme stuff. I I'm have sorry. many scars from that. Don't worry. I actually think that everything happens for a reason. You know, they bullied me because I was different. But right now, people love me for the same reasons I was bullied before. Many people uh, say they were sorry. How does that make you feel when they apologize? Uh, actually, kind of good for them because um, I know now that people is changing. Not 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 just them. All the world is changing. Um, they are more compre comprehensive, uh, they are more open-minded, the love is growing and that's what we need because the world is ending and we have to love each other and work together to make this a better place. Before this can be ends. haven if we all put our hands together. Heaven on earth by accepting that which is evil. You know, um, the scripture actually talks about that, you know. Go to Genesis chapter 11. What happened? God is a God of variety. God is a God of distinction. If he wasn't, we would all look the same. There'd be all one tree. There would all be one horse, one dog, one cat. God's a God of variety, okay? He likes different variety. When it comes to faith, no. No, he made you and he wants to have a relationship with you, okay? But God is a God of variety. But what happens when everybody gets together? It can be heaven, right? As he said, which is what that man of sin, the son of perdition, is going to try to emulate. But the scriptures tell us something about a very similar thing which uh, Satan is working on today. Genesis chapter 11, verses 1 on verse 9. And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, Go to, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone, and slime had they for mortar. People, all people working together. Everybody working together, okay? What happens? And they said, go to, let us build us a city and a tower, whose top may reach unto heaven. And let us make us a name lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. So when all mankind gets together, what do they want to do? They build towers to reach unto heaven, to make a name for themselves. And uh, I, I mentioned this earlier. Now, unfortunately, I'm going to have to piece this video together because of my mistake, but that's okay. 
That's okay. I have editing equipment. I can do that. Uh, let us make us a name. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Isaiah 14, verses 12 on to verse 15. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. Oh, like make a tower to go up to heaven? Hmm? I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Yeah. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High, your own little God. So when mankind gets together, they build towers to reach unto heaven so that they can be like God. Yeah. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. When lost, fallible man gets together. And you know, you got to remember too, this is after the flood. When men get to, when man gets together outside of Christ, because salvifically today you come to the Lord on his terms, broken, contrite, and in fear of him, you call upon his name and he save you, and you are saved, sealed until the day of redemption. Uh, you are, we are all one in Christ Jesus. There is uh, neither Jew nor Greek, male or female, bond or free, barbarian, Scythian, Demokami, or Republican, okay? Black or white, in salvation. In salvation there is no distinction. Fleshly, culturally, yes, there is distinction. Salvifically, there is no distinction. Okay? But see, when mankind gets together, they want to build towers to make names for themselves. What does the Lord do? Verse 5, And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. Verse 6, And the Lord said, Behold, this people is one, and they have all one language. And this they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Think about that. When man gets together and want to build towers to heaven, the Lord in verse 6 says, Now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Like ripping open somebody's throat and playing with their vocal cords as if they're guitar strings. Putting strings in somebody's eyes to change them. Creating biological weapons to release on the populace, to disguise as colds or flus. Making uh, uh, immune deficiency diseases. Creating cancer. Yeah, when man gets together and wants to build towers unto heaven, the Lord says there ain't nothing that will be what? Restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Make computers that can be like man with these algorithms which is going to attack this channel today at between uh, 8 or 9 o'clock uh, Illinois time, which is whatever, seven o'clock in San Bruno, California. They're going to, the algorithm is going to attack the video that the Lord gave me doing attacking, uh, attacking, excuse me, exposing that sow Roma army. Okay? A man gets together, like this young man was talking about. Nothing will be restrained from them. And when they have at the head of them that man of sin, the son of perdition, well, boy. We're almost done. Kelly wants to know your thoughts about furries and how they differ from other kin. An other kin can choose to be a furry. A furry cannot choose to be an other kin. You just have to other kin is an integral identification. Uh -huh. A furry creates a character, a persona, and often plays as or draws that character, uh -huh. but it is not their identity. Why do you think it wasn't until recently when the other kin community became so popular in mainstream media? The reason I think there's all this sudden popularity in it is it's different. And, and you it's different? Oh, you mean it's, it's new? 
It's different. It's new. Hmm. Hmm. Acts chapter 17, verses 19 on verse 21. And they took him and brought him onto the Areopagus, saying, May we know, may we know what this new doctrine whereof thou speakest is? For thou bringest certain strange things to our ears. We would know, therefore, what these things mean. For the Athenians and strangers which were there spent their time and nothing else but either to tell or to hear some new thing. Hmm. And you go on to read in Acts chapter 17, where, you know, where Paul talks about on Mars Hill, about how they have the uh, altar on to the unknown God, right? And they all want to hear something new. And like uh, several of you were already thinking of, Ecclesiastes chapter 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 1, okay? Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verses 9 and 10. The thing that hath been, it is that which shall be, and that which is done is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun. Is there anything whereof it may be said, See, this is new, it hath been already of old time, which was before us. Yea, hath God said, That old serpent, the devil, Satan, Yea, hath God said that you're not a wolf? There's nothing new under the sun. Evil is evil. See, we're supposed to be, what is it? Um, simple, um, uh, and children be, we're supposed to, we're supposed to understand, we're not supposed to be ignorant of the devices of Satan. And my brother, help me out because it uh, eludes my mind and I can't pause it to find it. But um, yeah, evil is evil and good is good. We cannot know truly, we cannot judge truly what is truly good and what is evil in and of ourselves. We need the Lord and the scriptures to tell us that. But see, all these people, there's nothing new under the sun. They have fallen for the lie of Satan. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And man in and of, its, in and of himself cannot know what is good and what is evil. He can't. Outside of God. Almost done. You know, I think one person found it probably... Unfortunately, people who are looking to make expletive, you know, documentaries, they found it, did it. Is there an Adam's apple there? That's a close-up. Is that an Adam's apple? I don't know. I don't know. Ugh. I got memed. They kind of knew what they wanted to produce before they interviewed me, and it wasn't what I was looking for as far as being in. They they wanted to paint other kin as silly? As something, yeah, as like the silly, jovial, look at these guys who, you know, dress up as animals. You're showing contempt with what God made, and you want to identify with something that has no wisdom or understanding. The fear of the Lord are departing from evil. It is silly. It's wicked and they blurred the line where they put furries in there and they wanted to create something controversial something to yeah to show that people should laugh at you yeah but the fact it got me i'm not laughing at you i mean i'm not it's it's tragic this is modern man this is this is the world today and this is a three-year-old four-year-old video that means other people who would not normally care are exposed to it. Yeah, for me, it, it was seeing the meme and then understanding that this community existed in the first place. Can, so you, it was say, because can you say that you're my fan then? I am your biggest fan. I am your biggest fan. No, no, don't be one of those. <laughs> <laughs> What's the biggest hardship 
about being other kin. Trying to externalize it because you know with plastic surgery it hurts, it pain, it, it's painful like yeah. in a body level. But you feel it on the inside and you feel like you have to yeah, show I the mean, world. Yeah, I mean you feel pain externally but inside you don't know how good it feels. Because you call evil good and good evil. You feel like you are becoming yourself. How does hanging out with other kin friends differ from hanging out with normies? Normies suck. Okay, 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 no, okay. Normies but, suck! Normies suck, bro! You hear that, normies? You suck! But no, like, I like... Almost a six symbol there, right? Yeah. Hanging out with... I work hard and I want my money to work hard. Oh. So I use my Freedom Unlimited card. Also in the background of when this girl's speaking, it might look like there's a monstrance on this guy's wall, okay? It looks like it, there almost be a monstrance, you know? People who are interesting. Yeah. Whether that be because they're other kin or maybe they're from this other fringe culture that I find interesting. I like hanging out with people who aren't cookie cutters. What would you say to someone watching who's questioning their identity and maybe feels like they might identify as other kin, but they're too ashamed to let the <clears throat> world know? People, and I want to say this to all of you. Can you see above that, above her head here? You can't see my pointer. But above her head there, there's that thing that might be a monstrance. You know that thing that they put the little wafer god in and carry it down the, th uh, the road like what Catholics do? Is that a monstrance? Might be in the background. There are cringy wolf jumping and stuff videos on YouTube. Some by kids, some by teenagers. You're wearing a dog collar! Representative of how Satan has you enchained! Ugh! And some by young adults. Don't bully them. Y you know, this whole cringe culture is BS. Yeah. You know, the, the stuff that you do with your friends and, and you have fun doing that you would never post on social media but you yeah. know you love, these yeah. people are brave enough to post that yes. and be like, this is a part of me I want to meet. And, and these people, you're just crushing them. Everyone wants to talk things down and I think that's the point. Before the Lord can save you, it has to be a suffering before it can be a glory. <laughs> You're doing the works of your father, the devil. And someone who goes to tell you the truth is called evil. But the evil today is called good. I feel like it's leaving people as shells of who they really are yeah. because they're afraid of being judged. Yeah. And, and let me tell you guys something. You don't know somebody's identity. Don't claim to. You need to... <laughs> uh, okay, you're right. I don't know whether you truly know whether you're a man or a woman. Okay? I'm sorry. But there's only two genders. Okay? Male and female. Okay? You're not a beast, even though that's what you want to be. Just subscribe to Anthony's channel. And do you know why you need to subscribe? Why? Oh. How embarrassing. How embarrassing. This, this foolish. All right, you got five seconds to shout out, promote anything you okay. want. To All right, that that that's enough. That's enough. Okay, that that's that's the gist of the video. That's that's it. That's enough. That's enough. That's enough. Luke chapter fifteen. Luke chapter fifteen. I was sent this. <laughs> I was sent this and I watched it and I'm like, oh wow. Uh, Luke chapter. What was this? Or is it Luke chapter 12? Oh. Oh, what? What? What was it? Luke 
close it. One second, please. Yes, Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12, verses 54 on to verse 57. And he said also to the people, When ye see a cloud rise out of the west, straightway ye say, There cometh a shower, and so it is. And when ye see the south wind blow, ye say, There will be heat, and it cometh to pass. Ye hypocrites! <clears throat> ye can discern the face of the sky and of the earth, but how is it that ye can how is it that ye do not discern this time? Yea, and why even of yourselves judge ye not what is right? Why? Because this is their hour in the power of darkness. Deuteronomy chapter 11, and then we will be done. Then we will be done. Deuteronomy chapter 11. Verses 26 on to verse 28. Behold, I set before you this day a blessing and a curse. A blessing if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I commanded you this day. And a curse if ye will not obey the commandments of the Lord your God. Turn aside out of the way which I command you this day to go after other gods which ye have not known. <laughs> what do you say after that, huh? These people have chosen Satan, the devil and themselves, to love themselves, hence to love Satan. The Lord is there. The love of God can be found. You just have to go on his terms, not your own. But people don't want that. People want the lies. People want to have someone to pat them on the head as they're running for a cliff. They love what is evil. And they hate what is good. And you again think that this is getting better? You're stupid. And as I was re wonderfully rebuked by a dear brother yesterday... You know, who did the Lord save today that was not saved yesterday? We got we to gotta remember that, brethren. Because we want out of here so badly. But as long as we're here, God has a purpose for us. And I believe, like Paul, who said in 2 Timothy chapter 4, I have finished my course. You know, he did what the Lord wanted him to do, and it was time for him to go. When it is time, when whatever the Lord is waiting for is done, then we're going to go. And then, dear people, when we go, the church of the living God, and you're left behind, this brave new world that Luis was talking about, is what's going to come, headed by Satan and the Roman Catholic Church. That's going to be it for this video. Got two videos to paste together. Thank you for watching this if you do. Come. Let us reason together, you and I. God help you. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. What do you say after that?